as I tread across the foreign land By the river of the sinking sand And my mission, your works is planned I and I, brethren, got work to be done Searching for the last sheep Not even sleep, they sleep Now, now, now Searching for the last sheep Only we by we And what is written Inside of the uh, Biblical passages here And today I would like to address uh, Blotting out The handwriting of ordinances That was against us In Colossians the uh, second chapter. Now, you have people who uh, teach that this was making reference to the law that Moses had, Moses had given. And uh, the Apostle Saul was teaching to blot out these, that Christ blotted out these handwriting of ordinances that was supposed to have had been against us. And then you have some people who teach, well, this was the whole law of Moses. And then you have some who teach, this was the sacrificial law. And uh, I'm here to present an argument that neither one of them are correct, according to what I have seen in the biblical passages. Here, the apostle Saul never separated any law to say a uh, sacrificial law or the moral law as, as some Israelites put it to try to reconcile this passage to say that you still ought to keep Moses' law one thing I will say to the audience that what has been done away is the first covenant and this is what many I've learned many of us have gotten confused in times past is that we fail to recognize what the writers were addressing. And they were addressing the first covenant compared to the second covenant. So that is a you know good background to really try to start with. It's the covenant that has been done away with. But the second covenant, or the new covenant, is built upon the foundations of the law, the prophets, and the apostles. And most high willing, we would deal with a teaching on that as well. But as I was saying that the sacrificial law isn't what is being made reference to here, nor is it the law of Moses that's actually being made reference to here. And what we have to do is go and see what the writer is talking about. Now here in Colossians, the second chapter, for us to begin to understand what was blotted out, let's go and see what we, as much, let's see how much information we can gather from the apostle Saul himself. And then maybe we can understand, which would also help the historical background in his day, in this particular place of Colossia. But we will address that possibly later. But now it says here in uh, Colossians chapter 2, starting at verse 1, he said, For I would not, excuse me, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. Because the foundation is something that Paul wanted to address the foundation of these messianic communities being knit together and the affection to do right is what he's bringing to the table and he's bringing to the table the mysteries that he want them to know of the father and of Christ verse 3 reads in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and this I say lest any man should beguile you with enticing words be very careful of this. Being beguiled with enticing words. It happens. And uh, we want to be aware. Verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, 
Yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith, which is in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ, or as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So the admonishment is to walk after the manner of the Christ. Being rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So he's encouraging them to be established and be rooted in the faith, walking after the steps of the Messiah. Now this is very important in understanding the passage. He's telling them to be grounded and knit in love. This is the foundation for them to be rooted, for them to be rooted and to be established in the faith of Christ, to walk in Christ. Now this is one of the primary things to recognize in this passage to understand the argument that the Apostle Saul is about to present before, before the people in Colossians. He reads in verse 8, he says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And even when we look at verse 8, he said, Be careful that no man called you to go astray, you know, uh, through vain deceit, after the traditions of men. So far, there's nothing being called in question about a sacrificial law or even the law of Moses. He isn't even mentioning it so far in this passage. Verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So what is he describing? The fullness of Christ, the people being knit together in love, which is the foundation that Christ spoke about in St. John chapter 14 and 15. So he can dwell in them and they can dwell in him. So he's talking about the fullness of Christ being rooted and established in Christ, which is the... Uh, what, because he is the uh, head of all principality and power. Notice. In him also are ye circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. And putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So now he's declaring those of us who are rooted and established in the faith of Christ. Rooted in the love or the affection to do right at all times. Okay, if we are rooted in him, this is the, the manifestation is our hearts being circumcised with a circumcision that is made with our hands. This is his argument. Notice what he's building up to. The person who had repented, he's coming into the church. He's being he's growing in love. Now, at the same time, he's being rooted and established in Christ, which is the head of all things. And now this head or this Christ, this anointing Christ is circumcising the heart with a circumcision that is made without hands. Now where does this lead a believer? Once he have put on Christ and walk in Christ like he declared in verse 6, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So if you're walking in him, then it is manifested in verse 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So you're walking in Christ, and you've been circumcised in Christ, and you have put off the body of sin. Notice what the argument that the apostle is going to bring, continue to bring. Just pay attention. Buried with him in baptism, a continuation of the circumcision of the heart, a continuation of putting on Christ, the Apostle Saul is adding. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, 
hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So he, he, he sort of worked backwards. He worked from putting on Christ and walking in him to the beginning on how a man used to be. How did a man, how did we used to be? We were dead in sins with the uncircumcision of our flesh. And he hath brought us alive. This is what quicken means. He hath brought us alive. He hath brought us alive with Christ. Forgiving us of trespasses. Why are the trespasses being forgiven? Because in verse 6 he declared, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Verse 7, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. So now you are putting on Christ, the heart in verse 11 being circumcised by Christ. So therefore, verse 13 could begin to conclude all the trespasses that you committed when you were in the deadness of the flesh, when you were in the uncircumcision of the flesh. All of these trespasses are now what? Forgiving you. Now notice verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way Nailing it to his cross. It wasn't the laws of Moses that was against you. He never mentioned laws of Moses. He never mentioned sacrificial law. He said the handwriting of ordinances. Now it leads the to the, you know, you see how people interpreting it one way or the other. But we know through the theme of the book, there is nothing that says that the law of Moses is done away with. And people have a difficulty in uh, making the separation between the law of Moses and the covenants. The law of Moses is contained in both covenants. It's the covenant that was done away with. Why? Because it condemned us. And why did the first covenant condemn us? Condemn us Because of the sin. And us being dead in our flesh. We were condemned because of the deadness and uncircumcision of our flesh. And we sinned and was condemned. And the first covenant was going to confirm that. But now we are forgiven of our trespasses. And verse 14 reads, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now, if people have difficulty on that, you might want to ask, well, what are exactly the handwriting of ordinances? And you know he's speaking in somewhat symbolically or metaphoric language because knows what he's explaining which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Well, it wasn't nothing nailed to the impalement stake of the Messiah, but the inscription, Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus of uh, Nazareth, uh, King of the Jews, or Yahusha uh, 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 Hamashiach, Malak of the Yehudi, and however they said it in Latin. That was the only thing nailed to his inscription, or into the impairment state, what are the handwriting of ordinances? Because whatever they are, they've been blotted out. But the context has been showing a man putting on Christ in verse 13, trespasses being forgiven. This is the case that he has built. So what are the handwriting of ordinances? If we just go to the uh, dictionary, we might could begin to get ground on this. What was the Apostle Saul speaking of? If we look up handwriting here in the New Unger's Bible Dictionary, handwriting reads, Certificate of Debt. Hmm, interesting. Was there a debt that was pending upon those who were dead in their flesh? Yes. Yes. And what was the, what was the payment that you had to pay to reconcile that debt. Your life. Our lives. Our lives are the only thing that can reconcile that debt. And that debt accumulated because of the trespasses of our sins. But the sins been forgiven. That means the debt been forgiven. Or as the apostle Saul declares, it's been blotted out. Notice. Certificate of debt. Same book, because it said handwriting of ordinances. See certificate of debt. 
So we looking up certificate of debt in the same dictionary, New Unger's Dictionary of the Bible. And it tells us that under certificate of debt, it is applied figuratively to the Mosaic law. This is what they're saying. But notice what they mean by that. Notice. Which shows men to be chargeable with offenses for which they must pay the penalty. The handwriting of ordinances. So he's talking about the Mosaic, figuratively the Mosaic law condemned us. The, content, the argument isn't the Mosaic law. It rightly condemned us. That's not what's being blotted out. What's being blotted out according to the context is the debt or the trespasses that accumulated for transgressing the Mosaic law. Therefore, we have received a debt upon our heads. But the certificate of debt is talking about the penalty that must be paid. So the Apostle Saul is explaining the penalty has been blotted out. The certificate of debt that you had accumulated have been blotted out. It's been nailed to Christ's cross. Why? Because upon impalement state, this is, this is the instrument which was used to get rid of and blot out or cancel out the debt accumulated by those who lived in their flesh. Now, since they have been put, since they have put on Christ, the debt have been paid, the forgiveness of sins. That's why he could continue to conclude in the same, because I know some, some people be waiting on this part. After the debt have been paid, he said, verse 15, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Notice. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. This passage as well, and this is what people get to understand, well, he's blotted out the Mosaic law. That is actually not at all what he did or what he's saying. What had been blotted out was the condemnation. What had been blotted out was the certificate of debt, the penalty that we owed. It's been blotted out because we put on Christ. Since it's been blotted out and we've been cleared of debt, the apostle began to conclude to the church people that let no man therefore judge you. Now, that's when it would do you well to understand it historically. And let me explain it historically, if you will, briefly. First of all, in Colossae, when you look it up, historically speaking, you will find in some, some commentaries on it. But they will give you the historical background of the procedures, of the legal procedures of the people in Colossae. When they owed a debt, the debt will be nailed to the doors of those who owed the debt. When the debt was paid, they would take a certificate of the receipt of payment and nail it to the door to, to show that the debt had been paid. So symbolically or figuratively, the apostles saw is using the Messiah since he paid the debt. It wasn't nailed to his door, but it was nailed to his impalement because that's where he paid the debt. Just like if you live, just like the man who would have paid your debt, where they dwell, they would show that the debt had been paid, wherever the debt was owed. Now, understanding this may help us because the people in Colossians understood it because he used the language what was going on in Colossians. Don't mess around and, and get confused because you because you're looking at the Bible through American or, or, or Western eyes. You have to go to the context and then understand historically the context and make more sense to you. Oh, the, 
Oh, the people of Colossians, when they received the letter, they realized that's right. So he paid the debt. They understood the figurative language. Because here in, in, in our city, or in our time, when we owed the debt, whoever paid the debt, they nailed it to the door. So they understood the figurative language. What else was going on in Colossians that he had to begin to explain to them? Let no man therefore judge you a meat or a drink or respect of a holy day. Well, what was going on here, which we're not doing this teaching on, I'll just briefly talk about it. We're going to go and confirm further about this certificate of debt being paid to show you where Saul got this language. But here, just to add to it, what was going on, brothers and sisters, is that, that you had the people who rejected the Messiah, but believed in the law. And therefore they followed behind the apostles as they were working, disrupting the assemblies that they were establishing. Perfect example is when the scribes and the Pharisees tried to condemn the Messiah on several occasions pertaining to the Sabbath day. And all the occasions they tried to condemn him for transgressing against the elders, which they looked at as high of authority as the law of Moses and they condemned them for picking corn on the Sabbath day. They condemned him for healing on the Sabbath day. Okay? They condemned them for eating bread with unwashed hands because the elders say you got to wash. They condemned them on many occasions and the apostle Saul was explaining, let no man therefore judge you. You walk in Christ, you've been cleared of guilt. Let no man judge you in the respect of the holy day. Let no man judge you in the keeping of the Sabbath day. Because they were being judged and condemned by those who rejected Messiah. You find this all through the Gospels. But what was the thing that brought the law and the holy days as relevance to them at that time? Notice the language of verse 17. He reads, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. What are a shadow of things to come? The holy days, the new moons, they are a shadow of things to come. You notice that the apostle Saul didn't say which were? You notice that? Key. Word signifies they used to exist. Word signifies is that what, that's what we used to do, but it pointed to something else. That's why he didn't say which were a shadow of things to come. He said which are. Presently, they were being observed by the church. And they were observing them. And he was explaining they are a shadow of things to come. Not which were. But we have other teachings on it. Now what we're going to deal with here is, he said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. The New Unger's Bible Dictionary declares unto us, it was talking about the penalty that was owed with the transgressions of, most, of the Mosaic Law. We understand this what it was because Paul described the condemnation that the people were under being dead in their sins, meaning you had a penalty to pay for breaking the Mosaic Law. Now your penalty been paid. Let's look at it this way. Because before Saul said it, Peter said it. And before Peter said it, Isaiah said it. Now let's go further and put this together. Don't let the preacher tell you that it's the Mosaic Law, because don't say nothing about the Mosaic Law. And more than likely, they're going to jump right to that verse. Don't even let your preacher tell you it's the, it's the sacrificial law, because you're going to look as bad as the one who said it's the Mosaic Law. Say what Paul said it was. What did Saul declare it to be? Through his context, it was an accumulation of trespasses made because of the transgressions of the uncircumcised heart of the man. He committed sins. He was condemned, and Saul was declaring that it's blotted out. Now, if we go here to Acts, the second chapter, we can read it again here in Acts chapter, excuse me, chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, and I'll start reading on verse 19, and we pay careful attention to the same decree or understanding. Verse 19, the apostle Peter, okay, or Simon, began to explain in verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. This is the same thing Saul was saying in Colossians. To put on Christ and to walk in him. 
Same thing he said in Colossians 1. He said, as ye have therefore received Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. He's explaining the same thing. Repent. Repent. Walk in Christ. Stop doing like you used to do. So this is what the Apostle Peter is explaining. That your sins, back in Acts chapter 2, 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. What's going to be blotted out? Your sins. What was Paul talking about that was nailed to his cross? The, the certificate of debt. How did the certificate of debt come into existence? Well, according to Saul, it came into existence because of the people who were dead in their sins in verse 13 in Colossians chapter 2. Uncircumcised in their flesh, he declares. He, which is the Messiah, hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. If your trespass has been forgiven, that means your sin has been blotted out. Just like Peter described. Blotting out our sins. The handwriting of ordinances, brothers and sisters, is the figurative, uh, 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 is the figurative uh, description of, the, uh, uh, of a certificate of debt. Which is a description of the sin and the penalties that we acquired because of transgressing the Moses law that he received from God. Now, Peter, I said, got it from Isaiah. Let's go, if you will, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Isaiah, chapter 43. And let's see if we can find and confirm what Peter was talking about. Because it is very necessary for us to understand because we look around us and we read the text. And the biblical text says there's going to be few people that say it. And once you start to read and understand the text, you begin to understand why that is so true and very much possible. Now, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 tells us in verse 24, it reads, Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, thou hast worried me with thine iniquities. I, even I, says Yahweh, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. This is what Yahweh declared. I'm going to blot out your transgressions. Peter said he had blotted out our sins after we repent. Paul declared in Colossians, once you have put on Christ and been rooted in him and the, and the old works and the dead is an uncircumcision of the flesh, which in you sin, once all that been forgiven of you, it has been manifested that the penalty of debt, the certificate of debt, which is our sins, have been blotted out and nailed to his cross because he paid for the penalty. And I told you before in Colossians, if you pay the debt in that place, they would nail the debt certificate to the door of those who paid the debt. Isaiah said, let's notice, it was, let's read it again in Isaiah 44. So we know we're not making a mistake here. Two witnesses to establish Paul's argument, Peter and Isaiah. Verse 22 in Isaiah chapter 44. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, and as a cloud Thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. And therefore we look to the Redeemer of the Mashiach. And when we walk like he walked, our sins will be remembered no more. Or they're blotted out. Or they're nailed to his cross. He reconciled the world by taking away sins. Not the Mosaic law. So what I would like to do is encourage the people. If you are studying, search the scriptures. And in fact, Two witnesses. By two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And here we are trying to establish the writings of Saul. And we established it with Peter. We established it with Isaiah. But before I close out for this segment 
in passage and study, I would like to go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 51. Psalms 51, and let's see if the psalmist can add a little bit more to this case concerning the uh, writings of the Apostle Saul. Now, it tells us here in Psalms uh, 51, and starting from uh, verse 1, it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. This is what Paul and Peter argument was. This is what Isaiah argument is. Cleanse me, as Paul put, put ye on Christ and walk in him and be rooted and established in him and your transgressions shall be forgiven. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you. Figuratively, figuratively speaking of what David and Isaiah and Peter talking about. Blot out my transgressions. Blotting out my sins. Wash me thoroughly, he said. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. So blot it out. And then further, and then further down in verse 9, he says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my transgress my iniquities blot out my iniquities get them out of sight creating me a clean heart like Saul declared the circumcision of the heart made without hands this was what David is arguing as well the circumcision of the heart made without hands cast he said created me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now as David declared, blot out my sins, blot out my iniquities, create a new heart in me. Don't take your Holy Spirit away. Isaiah declared, Yahweh shall blot out the transgressions, blot out our sins so he could receive us. Peter said, blot out the sins Repent so he can block your sins out for the time of restitution. And Paul was making the same argument that Peter and the prophets made. Paul did not deviate from the arguments of the apostles. And that's why Peter said Paul preached the same thing. And some things that Paul that say that the people twist like the people twist the prophets. With that, we're going to end it on this discussion. What was blotted out was not the law of Moses. What was blotted out was neither the sacrificial law. What was blotted out was our certificate of death, the penalty, the sins that we accumulated. That is what was blotted out and nailed to the cross of Christ. And just for the record, the sacrificial law was extinguished with the first covenant. So I'm not telling you to go kill no goats. What I am telling you to do is go and learn well the difference between the First Testament and the Second Testament. The Old Testament isn't the books from Genesis to Malachi, like most people are under the impression. The Old Testament is the Old or First Covenant. The New Testament isn't the books from Matthew to Revelation. That isn't the New Testament. The New Testament is the second covenant. I know what theologians have taught you, but I am trying to bring you to the awareness of what the writers and the passages of this book have taught us. This is the New Covenant. It's the New Testament. The Old Covenant is the Old Testament. Not the laws of Moses. It is the covenant. And these laws of Moses have been established in the new covenant. Read it in Hebrews chapter 8 and Jeremiah 31. But with that again, now we are sure. Until the next time, study your scriptures, search for context, and may the spirit and understanding of all
as I tread across the foreign land of the sinking sand and my mission your works is planned I and I brethren got work to be done searching for the last sheep not even sleep they sleep no 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 searching for the last sheep only weep they weep yeah